but that doesn't define a city. One week after the Decatur police shooting of Stephen Perkins, the city is still coping with the immeasurable weight of the incident. At Tops News 19 at 6, I'm Christine Killemeyer. And I'm Jerry Hayes. Today, Decatur city leaders came together to answer questions on camera for the first time since the incident. Now, those leaders included Mayor Tab Bowling, Police Chief Todd Pinion, Fire Chief Tracy Thornton, and Retired Youth Services Director for the city, Bruce Jones. They all had some requests for members of the community. First, to continue to pray for the Perkins family, as well as the city and its police department. Second, try to be patient through this investigation. But they also asked them if they continue to protest, please continue to do so peacefully. We have to let the process take care of itself. We have to be patient and let the people who we have put in these positions to, to, to take care of these type things and to be transparent and be honest, we have to trust that they're going to do that. If something happens and we're not in agreement, when we do hear answers, well, let's deal with that then. But to, to rush to judgment and to be, let our emotions get out of control and to, to decide that violence is the answer, that's not us. That's not us in Decatur. That's not who we are. Meanwhile, this is a live view of the sixth straight day of peaceful protesting in the River City. Loved ones and neighbors waited until 530 this evening to officially begin gathering outside of City Hall. Many spent the day at today's public viewing for Stephen Perkins and Decatur police shot Perkins just before 2 a.m. last Friday. He later died at the hospital from his injuries. Police arrived outside his home on Ryan Drive at the request of a tow truck driver. The driver said he went to Perkins home earlier that night to try to repossess a vehicle, and he said Perkins threatened him with a gun. When officers came back with the driver, they say Perkins again came out threatening them with a gun. Authorities say Perkins then pointed that gun at an officer who then shot him. Many, though, say Perkins only had a flashlight that night and the tow truck driver was at the wrong house. It was just pow, 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 pow. And um, I had called the police because my alarm system didn't go off and they said, don't go outside, it's not safe. Now, the investigation into this officer involved shooting was then handed over to the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency, which is typical in a situation like this. Meanwhile, Sunday, protests began with many calling for transparency into that investigation and answers about why this even happened. If you hear something commotion at your house, to so step out on your front lawn where you pay the mortgage that your house, where you lay your head out at night, it should not be uh, unlawful to go out to try to check on see what's going on. And as soon as you step out on your front lawn, you'd be murdered, shot seven times by the police. Those protests continued into Monday, asking for the release of body camera video. Decatur Police Chief Todd Pinion said his hands were tied. That video was now part of Aaliyah's investigation and it was no longer his call. That response, though, did not slow protesters. They gathered again Tuesday. This time, they weren't outside Decatur City Hall in the police department. They gathered outside a hotel along 6th Avenue in Decatur. The reason? Alabama Governor Kay Ivey was in town for a legislative update luncheon, and she answered News 19's questions about the shooting. That case is being investigated by Leo, and until they finish their investigation, there's not a whole lot to say. Uh, I trust Leo, and our job is to protect law enforcement officers as well as the public safety, and we'll stay true to that mission. Then Wednesday, Perkins family announced it had retained National Civil Rights Attorney Lee Merritt to help them seek justice and accountability. Merritt then met with the Morgan County District Attorney Scott Anderson Thursday afternoon. Before we talk about the terrible acts of the men who put him away, and before even that evidence that eventually will come out that shows him being ambushed and murdered, we want the community to know that he was a man, that he was loved, uh, that he was a benefit to this community, and there's a reason that a fight is about to come with it. And just last night, hundreds of people, galvanized by their grief, held a vigil for Perkins. His wife and two daughters were there, along with dozens of family members, even more loved ones. Today, Aaliyah released that Perkins' body has officially been transported to the Alabama Department of Forensic Science for an autopsy. It's also asking for anyone with any more information about the shooting to call its confidential tip line.
Once Aliyah's investigation is complete, those findings will be turned over to the Morgan County District Attorney to decide if the case needs to be presented to a grand jury. Funeral services for Stephen Clay Perkins will be held tomorrow, October 7th. The celebration of life will start at 11 a.m. It's happening at the Wheeler Chapel 